Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and today we're going to be going through a pre-trip inspection on a Class B bus. This is a special bus here that we're actually at our Jackson, New Jersey location right now. This is our first franchise location that we're actually able to open up and with plans to expand the nationwide. So if you are interested in getting yourself a CDO Class B with a passenger endorsement because you want to drive a bus like this or something that looks a little bit similar to this, then you definitely want to give our team a call at this number right here. They're able to help you out. Or just visit our website at cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, that's cdldrivingacademy.com if you're in the local Jackson, New Jersey area. We have other locations itself, so you can check out the website for that. But in this video, like I said, we're going to be going through a full pre-trip inspection on the outside of this vehicle for this special bus here. Now there are certain things that are different on this bus than maybe other videos that are out there on YouTube where there's actually no hood so you can't really open up the hood to go uh, look underneath the engine. So we'll show you exactly what to do if you're going to be taking this bus to the test or something similar to this which is like a cab over bus itself, right? So we're going to start off in the front. In the front, now it's going to be different. We're going to have things that are going to be, if you're going for a school bus or just a passenger endorsement. We're going to have our clearance light on top. They're going to be yellow, uh, amber in color, clean and functional, and not cracked or broken. Those are going to be our, our uh, eight-way eight lights. Those are going to be, if you're taking the school bus endorsement, same type of thing, red and amber in color, uh, clean and functional, no cracked or broken. What we're going to have here are uh, turn signals and our headlights are going to be clean and functional. Turn signals are amber in color. Headlights are, cl are clear in color. They're both clean and functional and not cracked or broken. Next thing we're going to have here is going to be our mirrors. So our mirrors and mirror brackets are secure, operate smoothly, are secure, and have no loose fittings, right? Now because this is a special vehicle, we're actually going to be talking about something that's behind this panel that we can't really see. Unless we're going to crawl underneath this bus right here, uh, not necessary if you're going for the test, you just have to point and talk to it itself. So behind this panel we're going to have our steering box. So our power steering box uh, is not leaking, it's mounted securely and not cracked or broken and also has no loose or missing bolts. The power steering hoses which is there as well is also going to be not cracked or leaking and my steering linkage which consists of my links, arms and rods are not worn or cracked, the joints and sockets are not worn or loose and there's no missing nuts, bolts or cotter keys. Now always the power steering box itself is going to be on the driver's side because that's when you turn the steering wheel, it's going to turn the steering shaft which is then going to maneuver all those things we just talked about there. So that's pretty much everything we have to talk about on, on this side. So let's go to the passenger side and talk about more. Alright, so now on this passenger side of the vehicle, we're going to have to go all the way down the side of the vehicle and explain everything that we see and potentially on things we don't see, kind of like just that power steering box. So the next thing we're going to talk about is our door. So our door opens and closes smoothly from the outside and the hinges are secure and the seals are intact. We're going to have our steps here. Our steps are solid, clear of objects and securely bolted itself. Next we're going to have any type of reflectors. So I can talk about all my reflectors at the same time. Our amber in color in the front, red in color in the back. They're clean and functional and not cracked or broken. Same thing with my turn signal lights and clearance lights around the vehicle. Amber in color in the front, red in the back, not cracked or broken, clean and functional. Now we're going to be talking about our tires right over here. So the tires consist of a few different items. We're going to have our tires, which we can see. We're also going to have our suspension that we cannot see and our brakes that we cannot see as well. But let's talk about these tires. So these tires are going to have 4 30 seconds of tread depth itself because since they're front steering tires. The tread is going to be evenly worn. There's no cracks or damage to the tread or to the side wall. My rims have no welding repairs. Uh, they're free from any, uh, they have no signs of looseness such as uh, rust trails itself and they're not cracked or broken. My lug nuts here are, are all present. Uh, there's no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny treads. And my bolt holes or my lug nuts itself are not cracked or distorted. Then over here I'm going to have my hub seal. My hub seal is not leaking and if there was a sight glass I would say that it would be adequate level. Here I'm going to have my um, uh, valve stem and cap. Here we're going to be using this to check the tire pressure with the tire gauge. It should be 90 to 100 psi and I'll make sure my valve stem and cap is mounted securely, not damaged or leaking. 
Back behind the tire that we cannot see, but we're still going to be talking about it, we're going to have our suspension. So on this vehicle itself, we're going to have our spring hangers. Spring hangers are not cracked or broken and mounted securely to the frame. We're going to have our leaf springs. Our leaf springs are not missing, shifted, cracked or broken. We're going to have our U-bolts. Our U-bolts are not loose or missing any bolts and securely mounted to the axle. And lastly, we're going to have our shock absorber. Shock absorber is mounted securely and not leaking. Then we're going to have our brakes, which are over here. Can you see the brakes? Because I can, but you still got to talk about them. So we're going to have our five braking components. Don't forget them. We're going to have our slack adjusters and push rods, which means you can't be broken, loose, or missing any parts. You cannot move more than one inch with the brakes released. You're going to have your brake hoses, lines, and couplings. Can't be cracked when they're leaking. You're going to have your uh, brake drum, which means it can't have any holes, cracks, or dents. No loose or missing bolts and free from contaminants such as debris, oil, and grease. You're going to have your brake lining, which can be worn dangerously thin. And lastly, we're going to have our brake chamber, which is not cracked, dented, or leaking. It's mounted securely and no loose or missing clamps on the brake chamber itself, right? So how many brake items were there? There are five. If you need help on this, I know this is a lot, you definitely want to come to one of our locations here. The best thing to do is just visit our website at cdldrivingacademy.com, see all the lo different locations that we have, and, and contact the location that's closest to you. If you want to come to, to train on this bus in particular, it's located in our Jackson location, you want to give the team a call at this number below, and they'll be definitely be able to help you out. Because in order for you to get your CDL license, you have to pass the entire pre-trip inspection on a bus itself for the outside inspection. So it's super important that you go through that. All right, so we talked about all this. Over here, we're going to have our mud flap. It's going to be uh, mounted securely and not damage itself. And pretty much here, we're going to have our fuel tank. Our fuel tank, uh, the cap is on tight. The tank is secure, and there's no leaks from the tank or the lines itself. Underneath this bus, we're going to have our frame. So we're going to have to talk about our frame, which is going to be my frame members, cross members, box and floor have no cracks, broken welds, or holes to any of those items right there, right? We talked about our reflectors already, and now we come to this back tire. So when it comes to the test, you can go through everything again, or you can take a shortcut, and I'm going to decide to take the shortcut. So shortcut is going to be, we're going to talk about the differences here. So on this back tire, since it is a back tire, can't have any less than two thirty seconds of an inch in tread depth, right? Over here, but since there's going to be two tires, we're going to be talking about our bud spacers. Our bud spacers cannot be bent, damaged, or rusted through. They have to be evenly centered with tires and wheels evenly separated. Uh, there also cannot be any foreign objects or debris inside the spacers itself. I'm also going to say that my tread is evenly worn. There's no cuts or damage to the tread or to the sidewall itself. My rim I'm going to inspect just like I did in the front. My lug nuts I'll inspect just like I did in the front. And over here, these are called an axle seal. So the axle seal is the, is the same exact way I would inspect the hub seal, which is going to be not leaking and filled to adequate level if there was a sight glass. And then my valve cap and stem is right over here. I'm going to make sure that there has proper air pressure of 90 to 100 psi and it cannot be cracked, worn, it cannot be cracked or leaking or damage on the valve stem and cap. Now back over here, we're going to have the same five brake items, which means my slack adjusters and push rods, my brake chamber, my brake hoses, lines, and couplings, my brake drum, and my brake lining. I would inspect all like I did in the front there. If you say that on the test and you did everything perfectly on the front, then you get full credit on the back and you don't have to go through each individual one again. When it comes to my suspension, I'm going to have my spring hangers, I'm going to have my uh, leaf springs, I'm going to have my U-bolts, I'm also going to have my torque arm. But those three items that I mentioned before, well, I'm going to inspect uh, just like I did in the front. And then when it comes to the torque arm, I'm going to make sure they're mounted securely and not damaged. So that pretty much covers everything over here. If we keep on moving back, and like I said, if you do want more help on this in particular, you definitely want to give us a call at this number below or check out our website. We're going to be checking out the back here. So we're going to be checking out the back. We're going to see my clearance lights are clean and functional, red in color. If we're doing the school bus endorsement, we'd be talking about those lights, but we're not. Over here, we're going to have our tail lights, our clean and functional, uh, red in color for brake lights, am uh, amber in color for the turn signals, reverse lights are white in color, license plate lights or tail lights are going to be red, and reflectors are red in color, clean and functional, not cracked or broken. Now, we went through pretty much the whole bus, but how does the actual bus get going? We actually have to check out the engine itself. So. Where is the engine? And this in particular bus, the engine is going to be in the back right over here. So now let's get down and dirty with what we have to talk about here. So it can be a little bit confusing, but we'll break it down step by step. Over here, this is going to be our coolant. So we've got to make sure that our coolant, we're going to check the sight glass, make sure it's above 
adequate level. If there was no sight glass, we'd have to wait till the engine was cool. That means it has to be completely cool. Then we can remove the cap and check the visible coolant level on the top. Over here, we're gonna have our oil level. So our oil level is actually going to be adequate level. It's going to make sure that um, I'm gonna check it with the engine off. And this is the dipstick right over here. Right over here, as we can see, we're gonna have our power, our alternator. Our alternator is going to be uh, belt driven. It's operating properly, it's not damaged or leaking, and it is mounted securely. Since it is belt driven, I'm gonna check the belt for snugness. Cannot have more than three quarter inch of play. Cannot have any cracks, frays, loose fibers, or signs of wear. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about this thing right over here, which is our power steering fluid. This is power steering fluid, I have to make sure it's at adequate level. It uh, must be above the refill mark, and I would check with the power steering dipstick, which is this right over here, if I had to. Now that pretty much is everything that we can see, but there's a three different items that we cannot see on this vehicle itself. So we're gonna be talking about our, alter our air compressor, our power steering pump, and our water pump. So if you follow this thick hose here, it will lead to our water pump. If you follow the hose leading from the air, from the power steering fluid, it will go to our power steering fluid pump. If you follow the air hoses, it will lead to the air compressor itself. So all those components are gonna be gear driven. They're gonna be operated properly, not damaged or leaking, and mounted securely. Now over here, we're gonna be checking for all my hoses. All my hoses seem to be in good condition and not leaking. We're gonna be checking underneath the vehicle itself to make sure there's no puddles or any fluid leaks from the engine and transmission. So in most pre-trip inspection stuff, you're actually gonna start off with the engine in the front. And that's the first thing, one of the first things that you're gonna do. But in this vehicle itself, at our Jackson, New Jersey location, you're actually gonna be doing that last. So it's actually a pretty cool feature and there is a possibility where you go to the test and you might not even have to talk about the engine because you have enough points to kind of move forward and pass that portion of the test itself. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Comment below if we missed anything. I don't think we did, but at the end of the day, this is a free video. So maybe I, met, I left some things out on purpose or maybe this is a perfectly good video. The only way for you to really find out is to get the best training in the whole wide world and that's to come to Drive an Academy at any of our locations. We have one currently in Linden, one currently in Jackson, New Jersey, whichever location is actually closest to you. We can accept you no matter where you live, no matter what part of the country you actually live in. So give us a call at the number below or check out our website at cdldrivenacademy.com if you're looking to get a CDL Class B with passenger endorsement. Thanks, we can help you out and have a good day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.